Welcome, yeah, so in this video, we're going to look at the integral of z to the n, where n is an integer, and so as such, uh, this result is going to be inclusive of uh, the result uh, given in the previous two videos. When n is equal to negative 1, we get the integral of 1 over z, which we saw in the last video, and when n is equal to 1, uh, we get the integral of just z, which was uh, the second to last video. So uh, this is a more general result that is inclusive of the last two videos. Uh, but it's very important that you watch uh, at least the last video in order for you to have an easy time understanding this video. Because in the last video, we introduced the idea of a cross cut, right? Uh, when we have a singular point um, at the origin, because here we're looking at, just like the last video, uh, a simple closed contour that encloses the origin. Uh, when we have a singular point at the origin, we introduced what's called a cross cut. And I discussed that at length in the last video, so I'm not going to do that here. So watch the last video to um, understand the idea of the cross cut. And what we said uh, using the cross cut is that like we'd form this contour using a cross cut that is in red, and we call the contour that's in red C. And clearly C is made of C1, L1, C2, this a small circle centered at the origin of radius r and then l2 right uh, together uh, these four contours here uh, make up the contour c which is all of this red contour right and i justified why we have to have a minus sign in front of c2 and everything else so again i'm not going to say what i said in the previous video watch the previous video um all right all right and what we said there is that like um, as the radius of uh, this small circle cent centered at the origin C2 goes to zero, as the radius R goes to zero, the crosscut gap uh, goes to zero, and so then C1 becomes a closed contour that encloses the origin. It becomes a simple closed contour C1 that encloses the origin. And we saw in the last video then that the integral over C, um, the closed integral, is the same as the integral over C1, right? Uh, the uh, simple closed contour that encloses the origin, uh, which in turn we saw in the last video again, uh, turns into the integral or is the same as the integral over C2, this small circle that is centered at the origin and encloses um, the singular point at the origin, right? Okay, okay, okay. Now, um, you see that when um, n is negative 1 or smaller, so when n is uh, less or equal to negative 1, uh, the origin is a singular point anytime uh, z to the n has n being less or equal to negative 1. So what we do is do exactly uh, what we did in the last video in uh, all those situations when n is less or equal to negative 1, which is use this idea of a cross cut. Now, because uh, the uh, integral over c1 is the same as the integral over c2, where again c2 is uh, this small circle centered at the origin, uh, what we could do is define a circle centered at the origin uh, in the complex plane as being z equal to r e to the i theta, which then uh, means that dz would have to look like this. And so then uh, z to the n over c, which is equal to uh, z to the n over uh, c1, which in turn is equal to uh, z to the n over c2, is going to look like this. And this is just mere substitution from what we said here is z and what we said is dz. Now, notice that in the integrand here, um, first we can use exponent rules and write um, r times e to the i theta o to the n power as r to the n times e to the i n theta. So uh, we do that, right? And let me show you that. Um, and once we do that, notice that we have r to the n in the integrand and r. So r to the n times r is going to turn into r to the n plus 1. And then we also have e to the i n theta times e to the i theta. And that is going to turn into e to the i times n plus 1 times theta. Um, okay, so let's do that. And now um, the general result of what this uh, integral becomes is the following. It becomes 0 anytime n is not equal to negative 1. And it is equal to 2 pi i when n is equal to negative 1. Now, why it is equal to 2 pi i when n is equal to negative 1? Remember, when n is equal to negative 1, z to the n is the same as 1 over z. And we did that integral in the previous video. So we fully justified why when n is equal to negative 1, uh, we get um, 2 pi i for uh, this integral, right? Okay, now... Uh, when n is greater or equal to 0, then z to the n is um, equal to f of z, uh, right? 
and when n is greater or equal to zero, uh, f of z would become uh, an analytic function that is analytic everywhere, right? Which is it's entire. And so since it's entire, meaning analytic everywhere, we saw in the uh, corollary at the end of the video on the evaluation theorem that uh, for any uh, contour in uh, a domain where uh, the function f of z is analytic, uh, we'd have that the integral is equal to zero. So it makes perfect sense uh, when, when um, f of z is equal to z to the n for n greater or equal to zero, since it'd be a polynomial in z, uh, y, we'd get uh, zero. But the curious question is, why is it that when n is um, less than negative one, we also have uh, z to the n integral being equal to zero? That's what we have not justified, right? Um, all right, so that's the rest of this video. In the rest of this video, I'm going to explain, instead of just making you believe this result, um, I'm going to explain why when uh, n is less than negative one, uh, z to the n integral um, will equal to zero, just like when n is greater or equal to zero. So when n is less than negative one, why is it that this integral is equal to zero, just like when n is greater or equal to zero? Well, uh, here's why. So for n is less than negative one, uh, let's represent any number n less than negative one uh, by negative a. So we're saying that like uh, a here is in the positive integers. And we're saying <laughs> also if it's not clear that uh, any number n less than negative one, we're representing with negative a. So our integral this here, right, which is the same as this here, would first have us write that n plus one is equal to one minus a. Because if we're representing any number n less than negative one with negative a, then um, n plus one would be negative a plus one, which is one minus a. And just for simplicity of writing, let's say that one minus a is negative b for b in the positive integers, yeah? Okay, um, then then uh, we'd have this, right? And that's just knowing that n plus one is equal to negative b. I've replaced this n plus one with negative b, as you can see, and this n plus one also is replaced by negative b. Now, uh, since r to the negative b is just a constant, we can put it in front of the integral with this other constant i. So let's do that first. So that's this. And then uh, in the integrand, uh, we have e to the i n theta. And we know that uh, using Euler's identity, e to the i n theta is equal to cosine n theta plus i times sine n theta. So using that interpretation, uh, we can write uh, the integrand like this. And then now, um, we know that cosine is even and sine is odd, meaning cosine of negative b theta is the same as cosine b theta, and uh, sine of uh, negative b theta is the same as negative sine of b theta. So using that fact, the fact that um, cosine of negative x is the same as cosine of x because it's even, and also the fact that sine of negative x is negative sine x because sine is odd, we can write uh, the integrand here like this, right? Okay, and then uh, we saw in the introduction video how we deal with integrals like this. We just do uh, the integral of the real part and then the integral of the imaginary part. Now to make uh, the integral of the imaginary part a little bit easier, uh, let's write minus i times sine b theta as plus, or let's think of it as plus i times negative sine b theta, because uh, then uh, since uh, the antiderivative of negative sine is cosine, uh, it makes the thinking a little bit easier, and we see that uh, this here uh, turns this here turns into this, right? And of course, we had to keep in mind that there is a b constant in both arguments, and so we had to divide by it, right? Okay, okay, okay. Now all we have left to do is evaluate, right? And so we evaluate, and we write this. Um, now. Uh, since b is in the positive integers, as we said here, um, we know that uh, sine of 2 pi times b is the same as sine of 2 pi, which is 0. And then cosine of 2 pi times b is the same as cosine of 2 pi, which is 1. And of course, sine of 0 is 0 and cosine of 0 is 1. So using that, uh, we can write first this here, which clearly simplifies to this here, and then in this part, we have i times 1 over b minus i times 1 over b, which is 0. And so we have a constant times 0, and therefore 0. Yeah? All right, cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. Lots more to come, and keep watching. Take care.